I believe that uh, our biggest or the the most important net worth or the net worth of a human life is what we give to this world, not what we take from the world. This is my strong conviction that our net worth is always what we deliver to this world and not what we take from this world. Secondly, effective years. Effective years is the time when you lived for the world, not that you lived for yourself. Because as a child, as a youth, we have been learning, we have been learning skills, we have been trying to position ourselves in the world, to get a job, to earn some money, to pay the bills and stuff like that. That's all for us, all for individuals. That's not effective life. Effective life is the time when we start giving back to earth, selflessly, unconditionally, and consistently. So effective years is what actually makes a person a a real personality. This is my strong belief. So I have walked this earth more or less alone since, since my youth or probably even before. And I, my dependency on people and on, on materials were very limited. Even now I feel that I'm not bound by people, time, spaces, materials maybe very mildly, not, not, not substantially bound or not bound in a very strong way. So how do I, this question was happening in my mind. What am I supposed to do in the world? Because at one point in time, I spent a lot of time trying to penetrate into the world of noises. I was living in the world of noises like everybody else. World of noises means world of communication, world of sounds, world of noises. And I spent substantial time, early morning hours from 3 a.m. to 8 a.m. continuously for a long time, trying to go deeper into the source of these noises, which was silence. And I kind of touched there. The moment I touched the silence, then this world of sounds became outside of me. I was not like a dry leaf in the winds, carried by the world of noises. I was stable because every noise has come out of silence and every noise goes back to silence. So silence is more or less like the calm, deep ocean. And I could taste or touch there. I could stabilize there. It took six years, seven years for that, a long time for that. The moment I started stabilizing further and further and further into the world of silence, every sound became outside of me. Inside, it's silence. Inside world is the real world. It's a real world. Outside world is a relative world. When you wake up, you have a world outside. When you sleep, you don't have that world outside. So it's a relative world. But inside world, it's always there. When you're sleeping, when you're awake, when you're dreaming, it's always there. That world was established in silence. Why I'm explaining this now is that so that you understand where I'm coming from. So I spend a lot of time assimilating this treasure which I received, which I, which came. So what happens with that existence? You need nothing from the outside world. Everything is fine. You don't really, really have any need or you're not bound by the world outside. No materials, no places, no people, no person. And I never had uh, any, any particular addiction that way, which I, which, without which I cannot exist. So this was the state and I continued like that. That's the time when I was asked by my higher ups, the masters, to go and speak in the world of noises. That was a big viola viola violation or violence. Once you are totally established in the world of silence, to go back to the world of noises, it's big trauma. It's impossibility. He said, no way. I can't go into the world of noises again. World of noises means world of differences. There is ups and downs, the dualities. All the dualities of life is played in the world of noises, means outside of you. And you have already done all this and you have nothing to do with it anymore. So you have literally spent time digging deeper and deeper and found the source, the core, 
and you you settle down there you are happy and from that mold you are asked to go back again by the by the seniors by the masters or let's say guru mandala go back to the world of noises i said i can't do that they said you must otherwise you may take another birth because you used this playing to get what you wanted now you got it now you pay back so i was again brought into the world of noises but this time as mohanji a personality a person a recognizable personality i would call it that way so i came back into the world of noises as silence not as another noise i was coming i was existing in the world of noises as another noise in the beginning later i came back to the world of noises as silence and this is probably what attracts people to me this depth of silence which some people are able to touch and feel and experience this is my understanding that this could be the reason why people would like to meet me and that and the rest is history the mission spread various places various activities various people started connecting they were all connecting to one core point their desire to be in the same state or same space that means their their desire to experience unchallenged silence undistorted silence stable silence so what can you you give the highest you can give is yourself i gave myself into this world when you give yourself you are very vulnerable because you are in a world of noises as silence you are like a fish out of water it's not easy i'm sure some of you understand this state and people look at you as they are and they judge you as they are they criticize you sometimes character assassinate you sometimes love you sometimes want to own you possess you as they are you can't do anything because you are here to deliver you deliver to everybody as they are as they can take there is no choice there is nothing else to do i am not complaining i never complained i never asked for favors from the masters i never asked anything from masters i, I just obeyed orders because you don't ask anything because you have everything you are one with everything what what can you ask so in this mold a personality is accepted just like various personalities has been accepted as they are in the world and we remember them like that mohan ji was accepted in the world in some degree acceptance rejection all these things i mean everybody will not accept you everybody may not like you everybody may not dislike you dislike you so in this world there is a position and a place for everybody all species every person has a position and a space mohan ji also has a position and a space some people found their truth in me and they came to me and they said i want to stay with you we want to be with you i never called anybody i never asked anybody to come but when they come i accept them i accept them as they are sent or their eligibility i never questioned i never rejected anybody i never asked anybody to leave i never asked anything from anybody any favors from anybody so this clarity i already had this there's no confusion there's no distortion then what will i give or what is my style as i am that's it i can't be somebody else and there's no need to be somebody else you can't be somebody else either you are you you are unique as you are i am unique as i am so i deliver as per what i am this may may be accepted or may be rejected by people we don't know we can't say anything because people are people they are themselves they will accept only if they can accept they will reject if they don't want to accept so this is the thing and then the growth whatever happened various countries various people started connecting for various reasons this show started where i had no control i never scripted it i never directed it i just acted my role played my role but i but simultaneously 
I continued to play my role as a son to my parents, as a father to my daughter, as a husband to my wife, as whatever people consider me as, as they think. I played that role. I never restricted any roles because that's not my job to restrict. People connect to me as they are, as I told earlier, and I just reciprocate. I do not tell people, hey, don't do that. Nor I tell people, no, I can't do that. So wherever there is a resistance or a re rejection, there is also a continuation for that matter. So I don't want anything to be postponed. Let everything happen. Good, bad, ugly, all those things, it will happen. This is exactly why. I never created any, any kind of a personality mania. But people must have a personality to connect to. They need an object, a frame, a form, a method, a, a known practice to connect to. This is essential. Otherwise, what will they connect to? If there is no Mohanji, what do they connect to? If I never existed, there will be no Mohanji to connect to. So I was created and sent by somebody. I never even asked why I am here. Since I am here, I do my job, what I am supposed to do. And which are the dimensions of operations, I never tell. People experience. Let people experience. Let people talk. Let people write. This is their thing, not mine. I, I tell people, always be truthful with your experiences. If you believe in your experiences only, you write about it. You must trust your experience and should believe in it. Then you write about it. That way, everything is authentic. If you fake it, or you hallucinated about it, it will not work. It will not work because people are not stupid. They understand. All people are intelligent. I believe that everybody are intelligent. Nobody can be fooled. So you can't really keep on delivering something fake and say, oh, now I fooled everybody. It never happens. For some time, maybe you fooled some people, but that's not the thing. And that price you have to pay. I never wanted anything to do with it. When you fool somebody, when you harm somebody, when you confuse somebody, when you character assassinate somebody, there is huge price. Maybe it will last lifetimes. When you gossip about somebody, when you betray somebody, the price to pay is unbelievable. Believe me, I don't want anything to do with it. I never betrayed, I never character assassinated, I never gossiped. I just tell you what I can. And when People talked bad or people judged me. I just kept quiet because they are paying the price. What's my problem? They want to pay a price, huge price for criticizing me. That's their job. They decided to pay. Maybe through lifetimes. It may take lifetimes to pay and pay off the debt. So I never created any personality cult here. But you need to have a face to speak to. You need to have somebody whom you can identify with. You need an image which you can recognize and connect. This is important and that image should be static. I never ever created one image. I was always free with my life. I moved as I am. I just moved around as I am. I walked in various, various costumes. I, I did my thing effortlessly or in a way I am. I just walk through the earth. So everything that people, people's opinions, people's concepts, they are all sitting in somebody's minds. I have no control over it. I will never control either. Because if they do good to the world, they get rewards. If they do bad to the world, they have to pay the price. This is very simple. You do good things to the world. You talk good about people. You are benevolent. You are compassionate. You are kind. You get a lot of rewards as energy, as uh, uh, grace comes to you. At the same time, you criticize people, judge people, character assassinate people, talk bad about people. Who probably you don't even know about that person, but we judge them because of our prejudices, before, because of our concepts. Then you are paying the price. You pay a huge price for it. Sometimes it goes into your, into your children's life. Sometimes it goes to your ancestors. Sometimes this huge debt you create Maybe the whole uh, tribe will have to pay. It's possible. When we harm somebody, we have huge price to pay. When we kill, we have big price to pay. So, 
I am very clear in this and I wanted to give you clarity because this question kept coming up. What am I trying to create in the world? Answer is very simple, nothing. What will happen? I don't know. And how things will happen, how it will evolve, I do not know. I never make a plan. I have no agenda. All these 10 years when I'm in public life, like 2012 till 20, 28 years plus, I'm in public life. I never scripted any, any agenda. It all happened. I never asked people to come to me, nor I asked people to go from me. I loved everybody who came to me. I accommodated everybody. I gave what I can as per our, my capacity to everybody who came. And I made sure nobody leaves empty handed from here. I gave whatever I could. But I have my capacity like you have. So I gave whatever I can. And then some people were disappointed because their expectation was too high. How can I, I sort it out? Some people were very happy and they wrote about it. They said, I got what I wanted. I, I'm thankful. I'm grateful. I'm also grateful for their confirmations and love. So this is how life is. And those who criticized me, judged me, character assassinated me, I thought, okay, they wanted this experience from me. So they, they got it that way. And if they are satisfied, I'm satisfied. Nothing touches me that way. Of course, there is inconvenience when somebody talks bad about you. It's inconvenient for you. But that's not, nothing is permanent. Same people may talk good about you later. So nothing in life is permanent. I'm very clear about this. So there is no personality cult. There is no cult. There is no sect. Nothing here. What will I do with all these things? I'm, I'm existing as, as a person who has been appointed to do some job to spread warmth and love to spread compassion, to spread kindness, to spread unconditional love, selflessness, to spread liberation. Or to bring liberation, the thought of liberation to people. How many people will be liberated? It's not my job. I don't know. But I, I'm bringing that thought of liberation to people. Some people may be liberated. Those who are consistent and they will never change their connection. They are always focused. They are fully clinging on they will probably get liberated or probably because they will connect to my state or what I am. And that happens to them. But no guarantees here. It depends on people. How many of them will be staying with you, fully connected to you? I do not know. I never ask. I never ask. Are you going to stay with me? I never ask. I even tell people, you can go now if you like. I've told this to people. You got what you wanted, now you can go. If you want, I never asked you to ask people to go. I never asked anybody to go, ever. I'll never ask either. So this is exactly how I am. I think I have explained in, in a broad perspective, what is Mohanji in this world? What am I doing here? And what is my purpose? My purpose is to, to bring the awareness higher, if I can. If people are willing to accept or connect consistently. There, there should be consistency. Without consistency, nothing happens. Otherwise, it's like a pot with a lot of holes. You pour water whole day, but eventually in the end of the day, there's no water because you are, we go, people go to various masters, various methods, various practices, and they try to compare, criticize, judge. That's not the right thing to do. I never tell people, you stay with me. If, if some people say, I found another master, say, please go, please go. You have all my blessings. I never bound people to me. I will never bind. Also, I never went to any guru for something. Little Babaji gave me the title of Raja Rishi, Raja Yogi. I never asked. After meeting in, in five, ten minutes, he gave me the title. He did not even, we didn't even discuss or I didn't even tell him who, what I do in life. He said, oh, precious diamond, this is your title. And he gave this ring to me from his hand. Likewise, Avdud Nadananda transferred his spiritual wealth to me. I never asked. I never asked. I never even knew that such a thing can happen. Ganesha Nandagiri, Vasudevan Swami, Devi Amma, all these masters who are deeply connected to me or deeply connected to me, they all support me, protect me, they love me. Not because I asked anything. I never asked anybody anything. Means I never asked a title. I never asked any kind of favor, nothing. So, life is very simple. I still am that silence which I earned almost 15 years ago. I still maintain that silence 
and some people like that silence and they get attracted to me i feel or some people like me or some some people come because somebody else told those people don't stay because their connection is not direct they have come because somebody else have come or somebody else have told them to come that never works because if your connection is not direct it never stays it never never happens forever you should feel you should assimilate you should connect and it should be suitable to you just like the shirt you wear that connection should be suitable to you you should feel good with that connection otherwise it won't stay never ever have a connection because of somebody's compulsion that will not work especially in path of spirituality and i never told anybody i am their guru i never told i am enlightened i never told anybody i will give them something or you come here i will make them enlightened i never told i don't give such promises i don't want to give promises this is all individualistic if the wood is sufficiently dry one spark can create fire in the wood in the wood but if the wood is green wet you can use a whole matchbox or you can use more but it will not catch fire so if dry wood comes to me maybe they will catch fire again i am not promising i am only delivering as best, best as i can sometimes some people say that he doesn't know anything i accept i don't know anything some people say he knows a lot of things i accept that's your call anyway i am judged as per what they are so i don't worry about it this is my answer